the collection is full of many wonderful curiosities, many items being sold and lots of wonderful little treasures. Some of the early rooms are filled with great, great treasures. But I wanted to show you a few of the dolls that really kind of appealed to me. Here on my right is this wonderful early, usually we call it a French paper mache, usually made for the French market. This one, however, does have an early uh, German body. So um, most of them were made by Andreas Voigt, who had gone to France um, and set up shop there, so to speak, but continue to have things made in Germany as well. So it, again, with these early paper mache, it's always difficult to know exactly who the maker was. What I found remarkable about this, other than its wonderful costuming, is her very, very um, regal pose of her face. And she has the original wig, and you don't find this. You just don't find this, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know if the camera can pick it up, but the hair is, is constructed of rows and rows and rows of tiny little narrow braids, and then looped around. And let me show you the go all the way around with it and show you from all sides. And look at the back. Then. I'll tip it over. That might be easier to see it that way. You can see now the various rows of the very narrow braids. This is a very, very exceptional doll. People like peddler dolls, and the Bossard collection can, uh, contained this wonderful um, collection of this wonderful early peddler doll on her original wooden base. Underneath the table is a, um, like a suggestion of carpeting. And then all around, all around the table are hanging her various wares, folios and pictures and all sorts of wonderful treasures that she would be offering. And the doll itself is an all wooden articulated um, Grodner tall doll. And I'll pull it up so you can see her face a little bit. You can see that clearly because she's kind of stoop shouldered. She's been working too hard. And then you can see the goods on the other side. And if I tip it, you might be able to see all of the goods in the front of the table. All of these are totally original to this doll. She's really wonderful. Now, let's stay with wooden dolls for a minute. I have this wonderful, wonderful um, Bebe um, carved German wooden doll. And what is rare about this doll? It is his jointed elbows. You simply do not find that. So the doll could be posed in various manners with his jointed elbows. Very, very rare and a wonderful size and wonderful original condition. Let me show you the back as well. And there's dowel jointing at the shoulders and at the elbows. So arms could be up, down, however you wish to have them. Wonderful early doll. A very tall doll of the type popularly known as the tuck comb. I had someone say to me recently, they wonder where women got this self-image of themselves, what their body is supposed to look like. Do you suppose it could trace back to these early Grodner tall dolls? That's a pretty thin waist, let me tell you. Not realistic, but there it is. Um, she is wonderfully preserved, has her original finish, and I'm going to turn it because I want you to see the curls at the sides of her face. Very, very gorgeous curls. Has her original pearl earrings. And she does have part of her original costume, which I'm going to show you. We have it here on a form, but it has, it's, it's black. And look at the velvet. It's black silk and then velvet back bodice and velvet collar. And then the black velvet extends around the front to form a vest, which is laced at the front. Very, very beautiful, and, the, and black velvet at the hem. And let me hold it up for you so you can see it this way. It's a wonderful piece of garment, wonderful. We have another pair of carved wooden dolls. Um, check the gentleman's carved wooden boots. They're pretty fancy. With a, this is all wooden and hand-painted on his boots. And she has the same, a different boot, but she has carved and painted wooden boots as well. 
And then the rarest part of them, watch, she has the dowel jointing in the neck. He has the dowel jointing in the neck. So their heads could be posed, nodding forward or proudly held upright. Very rare feature to find. Two other early pieces I wanted to show you. This wonderful early case. I have it upside down. And then when we open it up inside, these two beautiful early wax um, poupards in their original costuming. And then, finally, of the pieces I've shown you, remember there are many more, is this wonderful um, early mechanical. Now, I'm going to turn her around so you can see the front of her face. I don't know if the camera can scoot in there between the piano and the woman, but it's, it's hand-carved wooden. All right. And the piano has the original stenciling on it, the original lithograph paper on the floor, and those are bone carved, bone covered key, keys, and the music, the quality of the music on this piece is really exceptional. So I've been saying time and time again as we do this, how this auction, I've loved working on this collection. It's just been a joy to me because it is so full of just curious and different and unusual things. And I know that's what all of you are looking for. And you know, going back to what I talked about a little while ago about doll makers, when, I, when they would come up with their ingenious mechanical pieces or different models, and I would say, what were they thinking? What were they thinking? Well, maybe they were like you are as collectors. Maybe they, after a while, they just wanted something different too. Well, here's some of the different things um, from this wonderful collection, just things that didn't fit into a category I was going to show you, but I just wanted to share with you because I so regret that we won't have that room and the doors open and you all come flooding in and see the displays and the beautiful dolls in person, but we'll, we'll get along this way. We'll, we'll just do what we can to share, share dolls with everyone. And by the way, before I end, thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. Well, let's look at some of these things here. Now you're all familiar with the Mark doll, which is a doll that holds the world auction record uh, price. And the, the Mark doll was first presented in Paris at, this, at the uh, shop of Marguerite Lacroix, um, a little fashion shop in Paris. And it was an exhibition of Mark and dolls by SFBJ wearing dolls and costumes, historical costumes. And every once in a while, one of the dolls will appear that will um, come in and will have the original Margaine Lacroix cloth label, which I will turn this little handsome SFBJ fellow around so you can see the original label at the back of his costume, Margaine Lacroix. So he was part of that wonderful exhibition in which the Marx doll was first presented to the world. And he looks like he was like standing in attendance and let me, while I have him turned around, let me show you the top of his hat. And then look at the buttons on his hat, which are repeated um, on the belt that goes around his waist. And I wanted to try to take the time to figure out who that was, but I didn't have the time. And if one of you can know and tell me, I would be so appreciative. So he was in that exhibition. Well, this came in and this had always been exhibited in, um, in their home, along with this doll, which also, based on the quality of the costuming and the type of headdress and the stylistic thing, being SFBJ, I suspect also was from the Margaine Lacroix collection, but not having a label, we can never definitely know for sure. And let me turn her around. You can see her all the way around. Her wonderful coronet. Look, you can see the, there is the, the ivory satin gown goes all the way around. And then there is the overtrain with a very, very rich metallic edging. And that metallic edging is repeated in her coronet with yellow beading and green emerald stones, which are then repeated down the front of the dress. 
very, very, two very beautiful historically costumed dolls. A minute ago, I showed you a French doll, um, the, little, the little mignonettes that you push down on their shoulders, and one of them revealed the mask from her face, and the other one um, uh, had, was shaking the little polichinelle. Here we have the violinist. A larger size, but a novelty of something that was done with a classic French poupée head. I'm going to turn him around. You can see the hand wind knob at the back of his torso. And he's wearing his original, albeit faded, original costume with the gold edging on it. And I'll let's play him again just for fun. Isn't it great? Okay. I love this doll because I loved, I mean, she, she really is like in, in her undergarment dress or her day house dress. She doesn't have some of the uh, elaborate costuming of some of the wax dolls, but I love the pose of her face. It's so, um, it's so demure and her face is just so artistic. And I'm going to turn her so you can see the face from different angles too, because it's just really very, very beautiful like she's looking down at children playing or looking at a little animal. Let's see her from this side. Very beautiful. And then we'll tilt it up just a little bit so you can see it that way. I think one of the most beautiful wax dolls we've had. Skipping from very beautiful to what I would call um, plain and simple are the wonderful sh example from the wonderful Schoenhut collection um, in this auction, Schoenhut dolls. And this is the very rare uh, bonnet doll. And I brought this up to show you because it's always useful to collectors to be able to see the bonnet all around. So let me do that for you. This bonnet is carved on her head and then painted like a little cap with brown stenciling and yellow and red wildflowers with little green leaves. And then when you get to the front of her face again, now you'll notice the carved hair that's peeking out from underneath the bonnet. And if you ever noticed, she even has the little tie streamers that go under her chin, tying on the cap. Very simple doll, well-loved. Finishes rubbed, but original. Just a work of really not folk art, but that type of genre. Now skipping to something a little more, slightly more contemporary. In the 1930s, F&B introduced a series of their dolls they called the Historical Series. And they were based on an exhibition of dolls that traveled around America, larger dolls, um, wearing historical costumes. There were 30 of these dolls in the complete series that they then issued to be sold in stores. And each one represented a certain period of period and place in American history. Um, and this was one of my favorites because I, in, we have 19 of them in this auction. They end the auction, the 19 F&B historical series of dolls. And this one is my favorite. I had not seen her before. And they call all this one the colonial period. She so much looks like Martha Washington. I've been watching that biography of Washington on the History Channel, which you should watch if you love history. It's quite intriguing. A different perspective of Washington and Martha than you've ever have seen before. So that's why I guess why I was liking her and brought her out to show you today. And speaking of history, John Meacham, one of my favorite contemporary historians, has just issued a podcast called Hope Through History. And those of us who are looking for ways to get us through these times, listen to that podcast, Hope Through History, and it'll, it'll do things for you. Now, there are some wonderful German Biss characters in this auction, and a lot of great googlies, and what I call mischievous characters. And uh, Madame Bossard was really loved she loved dogs too, so there's a lot of a lot of dogs in her collection, and we coupled them with dolls that we thought they were appropriate with in many cases. So here is this wonderful googly 
the Hertel and Schwab Jubilee Googly, and we have him with his own little pet dog, a Googly, Chad Valley Googly, that is, we think they're kind of like good friends and they're really staring at each other, so that's a happy fellow that I like looking at. One of the things about Googly, so, someone said to me once, look, you have them you have them in your room you walk in there you can't help but smile every time you see a googly they just do that to you and these are times we maybe should all have a room of googlies so there's your doll and the dog to go with him and we have the very rare max from kessner this is the kessner's version of from max from the max and moritz the cats and jammer kids series a very very beautifully sculpted hair very deep curls at the sides and when I bring it around, notice the decorative gloss that is original to the doll. And when I bring him around again, look at how deep and taglio the eyes are. Really pop, makes them pop out. And that decorative glaze on the hair is repeated on the brows as well. So that's a very, very great piece. And he has his original costume, wonderful piece. And finally, I wanted to show you this, which is not a doll, but I love curious pieces. And when I saw this, I said, wow, look at that. It's a cradle, okay, and on the top is a lithographed baby in a bunting, and on the sides, on all four sides is a different scene. Here the children are, I, well, you know what, I'm just realizing, no, look, on this side it's ring around the rosies. So ring around the rosy, ring around the rosy, and then, and then, what, do, what is the final line in that? all fall down. And here it is on the other side. And on this side we have a boy pulling a little girl on a horse. And on this side we have a girl or a mother giving her little baby a ride on the back of her large St. Bernard dog. And finally, in case you wondered what was this, when you open it up there is the ads for the biscuits, the bone bones. And it was probably a special gift box of bone bones or treats for a new christening baby or a shower. And there it is, it's a wonderful piece. An example then of a manufacturer making something as a presentation piece that then would be used by the child in the family as, as a plaything in their nursery. The, and finally, just to end on a little note of festivity and fun, I want to show you two wonderful mechanical animals made by Roulet and Decomp at the end of the 1800s. And I want to think this is all of us briskly taking our walk and getting out in that fresh air. And here we go first with the poodle. I think they're just so much fun to watch. I can't put them down because they won't go on the wood, the wood table here. And then finally, the ever popular, ever beloved pig. Watch him. These are some of the more than 350 wonderful, wonderful treasures. Um, we will have, the auction will be live online. You can do telephone bidding, absentee bidding. You can bid online. Um, Stuart will be here with his horrible jokes as usual. And um, we'll have a good time all day showing, we'll bring the dolls up to the camera so you can be bidding, actually bidding live. And it's the closest we can come to all being together at this time, but that's what we're going to do, and we're going to have a grand time doing it. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoy.